Hi, so it's May 3rd. Uh, it's been a pretty interesting week. Uh, last week, as you know, at the end of the week, we got our results from our Q&A with Dr. Stacy Mulder of MDA um, in Houston. She uh, told us a little bit, answered questions about metaplastic breast cancer for us um, that the women in the Facebook group um, had posed to her and answered some questions about the DAT trial, which is a trial that she's involved with. And so um, we posted that on our website, uh, www.metaplasticbc.com. So go there if you want to see the um, answers to the questions. And I, I really appreciate all the ladies uh, pitching in with um, some really thoughtful um, questions to pose for Dr. Mulder. So uh, after talking to her, uh, I sent her a note that said that I was working on this um, College of American Pathologists pr presentation. Well, it's more of a, a proposal for them. Uh, yearly, they will um, take a look at some um, new guidelines, and they've, uh, I guess they've um, uh, decided that each year they're going to pick one pet project to, to work on. And uh, working with Dr. Mezelek of um, uh, uh, Boston Mass., uh, he had gotten me in contact with them and I created a proposal. Basically the proposal says that what we want to do is have more consistency with metaplastic breast cancer diagnoses and the pathology reports. Uh, as you all know, women get, um, some women get very little information. They get information that says metaplastic breast cancer or mes metaplastic carcinoma only. Some women get uh, more detailed information maybe that says their subtype, spindle cell, um, squamous, um, or matrix producing or such, you know, something like that. But even then, even when we're getting those subtypes, we're getting a lot of different language. Uh, some people are using the new um, 2011 World Health Organization classifications, but then other doctors are not using that language, and so it's a little confusing as to exactly the subtype. And also there are um, uh, some women who aren't seeing at all, they're like KI67 scores, they're not seeing other information about the stains in the IHC um, that was done. And so potentially if you had an um, EGFR overexpression, epidural growth factor receptor uh, overexpression, you might not know that. And so there are actually drugs that they're working on now for that. Um, I'd like to see PI3K um, be something that's listed for us. Uh, P10. There's all kinds of things. So basically I made a proposal for the College of American Pathologists and I sent that in. And that was about two weeks ago. Um, I mentioned to Dr. Mulder that I had sent that in and that I hope to hear back from them sometime in June. And if I did hear back from them, would she be interested in helping me out? Um, she actually sent me a note back saying she was interested in that and she CC'd a couple of other MDA doctors. Um, one pathologist who um, corresponded with me briefly over um, the beginning of the week and uh, we discussed it a little bit. Um, I think he feels like it's not much chance that that College of American Pathologists um, proposal will go through uh, primarily because of economic issues and that uh, it would be uh, cost prohibitive for everyone to have their um, tumors profiled through a pathologist or insurance companies wouldn't pay for that. Well, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, but he also sort of enlightened me a little bit saying that um, some doctors are not all that um, thrilled with the language that the World Health Organization had created, and so that's why they're still using matrix pr producing and other language like that that is no longer in the official classification, but because they feel like it's more descriptive and a, a, a better classification, they continue to use that. So, I mean, I think confusion is going to continue as long as we can't get consensus on that. And, you, you know, my point to the, uh, the CAP people is that um, the only progress that we're going to make is to be able to first identify, classify, describe these tumors accurately. And until we do that, there's just no way that we're going to be able to get good studies. And considering that I think Dr. Mulder in her um, question and answer session with us, considering that she had said, um, you know, a lot of our studies are retrospective in nature, um, you know, if we're at least getting this stuff written down correctly to start with, uh, even if they're not doing active studies on us, um, clinical trials on us specifically, uh, you know, we might be able to, if we had some consensus, be able to get some retrospective studies that would help a little bit. So that's kind of where we are with that. I'm looking forward to this week because the Rev. Uh, two 2014 form is going to be coming to Washington, D.C. I've taken a couple days off Thursday and Friday. I'm going to that. I'm looking forward to me meeting Alicia Stales. I'm looking forward to meeting the current president of ASCO. Um, that's the American Society of Clinical Oncologists, Dr. Hodes. And um, 
you know, I've made some cards, and so I'm going to be um, c kind of getting the message out and doing everything I can to connect and network with people uh, during that conference. So I'm looking forward to this week, and uh, I'll keep you up to date with what I hear from CAP, and uh, I'll update you next week on how this uh, Rev form goes. It's a health care form, and so I'm looking forward to um, all the people I'm going to get to meet there. So hopefully we'll keep going. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week.